death 1996, Prince Charles and Princess Diana got divorced. More than 4% of the UK population got internet access. Mitya Popovic, Serbian painter, died. And I moved to London and officially became a British Serb. My name is Maya Jordan. I was born in Belgrade and my love for music led me to become a classical pianist. My other passion is promoting Serbia and Serbian culture, so I joined Serbian Council of Great Britain when it was founded in 2004 and have been an active member ever since. In the unusual circumstances in which we find ourselves in 2020, instead of self-isolating, the Serbian Council invites you to connect and share your story with others. We have different life experiences, but we have one thing in common. We were either born in Serbia, or born in Britain, but have Serbian origins, or are connected with Serbia in some way. So, what is your story? Let's find out what a couple story will reveal. Welcome! Dobrodošli na Čašicu razgovora. In the last few decades, uh, we have been witnessing the rapid change of our society. Uh, seeing that tradition is uh, struggling to, to cope with all innovations uh, that uh, our modern world brought to us. But talking about the food, uh, we are actually quite often turning back uh, to our uh, mothers and grannies and uh, trying to preserve all these secrets that they have uh, that uh, make uh, such a difference in, in the taste of our food. Uh, our guest, Snezhana Knowles, uh, uh, seems to be able to connect all these two things uh, under the brand which started as a granny secret and uh, she brought uh, preserved food from Serbia and the Balkans to the tables of the modern society all around the world. Uh, Snezhana, thank you very much for joining us, uh, but uh, uh, what uh, I want to hear before we find out about success and secret of your uh, success uh, in this business, uh, tell us how you came to England and uh, what is your story? Okay, hi, hello. Uh, thank you for contacting me. I, su I suppose you're speaking in English, yeah? Yes, um, you yeah. I came back in 1989, uh, more than 30 years ago, as a young girl, very young girl. <laughs> um, and um, uh, uh, initially, uh, because I, I, I come from capital of Serbia, Belgrade, as you know, and uh, this is where I went to school. I was born, went to school. Uh, my father was uh, Bos Bosnian. Uh, and uh, anyway, after gradu graduating, well, actually on the last year of my uh, university in mechanical engineering, I was in UK already and traveling back, back and forth to uh, pass final exams. I had uh, no plans to uh, immigrate or settle anywhere. I was just going, you know, which is probably the best way, no plans, just go, go for a little bit of adventure. <laughs> so virtually, I didn't have any tension to stay or anything. Um, I thought since I learned English in school, English lessons, so let's go and uh, find out how, how is it there. So needless to say, um, when I first came when I was in the pub, I couldn't understand how to do things before. I, I, considering I learned English from, from the year four primary school all the way through education, I couldn't understand half the things they were saying. <laughs> all of us, you're not only one. <laughs> it's a common, common problem we have, although we really think we do speak English, but, but not really until we come here. Also, my accent was strong, uh, not that I could hear myself, but uh, I'm, because in, in Serbia we have American films, so we, we picked up naturally uh, American way of pronouncing. So we were walking to Adelia and asked for sandwich, and they're looking at you <laughs> and things like that. So anyway, it was a I was on a fast learning curve that first month. I, I came to stay just for a month. And what happened, uh, what happened one evening in the pub, it, that was a local pub in Denham, Buckinghamshire. I happened to be there because there were some friends. Um, there, there was a rumor going around, oh, the local company is looking for, for a test engineer. So what do you do? Well, I said, well, funny enough, I'm on the last year of engineering. So I'm actually just about to graduate um, in a month time. And they said, um, 
they mentioned that the name of the company so not Reka, I know nothing about. And uh, she said, maybe you should send the CV. And I said, what is CV? It's <laughs> really back to this here. And they said, well, you put your height, weight, sorry, pulling your legs. And I didn't understand the joke, I didn't say any of that. <laughs> anyway, I understood that I need to put my kind of biography and uh, I didn't even have a height writer, so it was handwritten. And I sent it all off. And uh, somehow, I'm just describing this, uh, um, a little bit how lucky I was because that was 1989, in 1990, 1991, uh, there was a start of recession. So, um, anyway, so I sent off my CV, uh, so that was beginning of 1990. I, I did come back and forth a couple of times, as I said, because of exams. Um, so, uh, they, I was invited in the first interview, and um, I didn't know anything. I didn't know what the salaries were, what the job was. I think my winning card was most likely my personality, and uh, obviously they, they had respect for our uh, our degrees and our, our knowledge there. So we had your tests, etc. Um, and what I didn't know was there were now the 30 candidates apply uh, apply for the same job. So I waited a few weeks, and then I, I had a phone call for another interview, etc., etc. So I managed to get that job, which was early 1990, uh, right into right before the recession, um, as a test engineer. In this company, and um, I, I think being on mechanical engineering in Belgrade and our uh, era cosmonautics, we were doing a bit of rocket motor testing in the Bourbon Potok. <laughs> so, uh, when I was going around the site, which were dealing with explosives anyway, I said, Oh, yeah, I'm familiar with this, we've done um, all these firings and everything. So, that was probably the leading card to, to get a job, to be honest. Uh, anyway, um, needless to say, I was one of the two female engineers, so it was a bit of a Monica, because in Belgrade in Serbia, it was perfectly normal for, for ladies to go on engineering, um, either architecture or anything. Here it was quite unusual, and they'll come to you to ask for directions or make a cup of tea or something. <laughs> so it was kind of a bit of a learning curve there, which I didn't mind very much. So anyway, that was my first job. So I ended up in um, a role, Buckinghamshire, uh, first uh, 11, 10, 10 years of being in the UK. Um, Obviously, uh, I had a career break because um, I had my first child and my second child. So with the first one, I went back to work. That was uh, shocking because I think in Serbia, when mums, from what I heard, is that they take longer maternity leave here. It was like five and a half months. So it was really hard. So when my second one uh, came along, I, uh, I decided to either ask for part-time or, or leave. Uh, so later was the case because for my job, part-time was impossible. Uh, now it's different. Uh, 30 years on, we have loads more rights as a returning to work. Uh, but that's how it was then. So, uh, without too much thinking, I left my nice job <laughs> that I really loved uh, because they knew where my priorities were. I wanted to spend um, more time with the, uh, my second child to be, which I didn't know what it was going to be a boy or a girl, and it happened to be a girl. So, uh, I was delighted. And uh, that was me. So, after that, long story short, I had. Um, uh, but Nina was Nina, that's her name now, it is quite zero. Uh, she, um, when she was ready to stop nursing, I was applying for jobs, and uh, that takes me to an interview for an Airbus job in Bristol. Okay. So it's a nice country. <laughs> so at that point, uh, that was like a very, very big development campaign. They're really recruiting from all over the world. It didn't matter which background you were from, which was great for me. <laughs> Uh, you, you were actually um, considered. So I uh, managed to get the job in Bristol. So I started the job and moved to Bristol uh, with a young family in October 2000. Yeah, 2000? Yes. Um, and then um, 11 years working at Airbus until year 2011. Now I'm fast forwarding um, because you probably want to hear more about the business. So I was um, altogether, I was 21 years in the UK uh, working in the industry. Um, but I could, I had a career break, see the children, having children and everything, but something was missing. Uh, I don't know, I didn't know what was missing. Uh, so I just took, um, uh, I decided to take a sabbatical leave uh, three months on. I, I would say probably a mixture of nostalgia, what I'm going to do next. Uh, I came to just a little bit of adventure and I happened to be staying in this country, got to citizenship and everything and uh, married an Englishman. So, I, I didn't say we had a third child as well. <laughs> so at that point, I, had, I was nearly, I was, well, I was in my 40s when I had um, got the youngest one. So at that point, uh, when she was just about to start school, I, I've seen 
I've seen how it was hard working full time and having young children and taking them to nursery. After nursery, this is extreme stress. Everybody who, who is little learner knows how, how that was. With the third one coming, and it was my last one, uh, I just wanted to think. So I took my uh, girls with me. The obvious one by then was left, left home. And uh, we went to Serbia. So for three weeks, and we stayed in a family home. And um, my cousin, who I haven't seen in about 20 years, she lives in um, Daily Morgan. She came to visit. And uh, so there we were like uh, in a family home, uh, three or four of, our, of us cousins with uh, children and everything. I really had a great time. Uh, and I would say the difference it made um, to have three weeks compared to always the other shorter time here. When you work here, you have two weeks maximum, and just when you start to relax, you have to go back. In this case, that extra week is crucial because I really, really enjoyed domestic tomatoes, peppers, salads, watermelons. There was a beer fest, no beer fest, beer fest, yeah, there was beer fest in Belgrade, and we went there, I totally relaxed and enjoyed. And I came back home, and I was just complaining to my husband. I complained, I complained big time that he said at the end, okay, so what, what, what do you want to do? What would you like to have? I said, what I would like, well, I would like to be able to walk into that corner shop, find either on the shelves, and uh, bring it home. And he said, that's not bad idea. I said, what do you mean? <laughs> well, he said, um, so what is missing? Food? Yes, I really crave our food. I was brought up on Iva, I was brought up on roasted crackers, I was brought up on sour cherries. None of this stuff you can find here. I'm sorry, I know I have three children, I know I'm here, but I'm missing our food. What do I do? And he said, well, that's a good idea. Maybe you could be importer of uh, Iva. And I was in the middle of A350 um, project, <laughs> working on a new aircraft and said, I don't even know what you mean, but I think it sounds like a good idea. I just need to um, think about this. So, I went to my larder and I got a large arriva, which was produced by Danny Secret, uh, Foodland. Mm. And um, I, I don't think it was even named Danny Secret at the time, it was back in the time. And uh, I read the website address, I went to my website, I read the story how they grow all these peppers and they support local economy on uh, Copernic and they employ people who would normally be able to get jobs, and especially ladies who or billion hooks, but they are not able to get jobs. And the story was really fantastic. And to be honest, I felt like I need to bring, give something back to my country because Serbia is the place where I grew up. We had a free education, and I just I just left. Just when everything was given to me, I left. So, bye. <laughs> so I thought it was maybe that was good. the way of me saying thank you back is to actually try to support this that economy further. So um, it's taken me. So I decided to um, make a phone call. It's taken me three days courage to actually phone because I didn't know what to what to say to them because I was an engineer working on projects. <laughs> nothing about That's not a topic at all. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know about sales for that. And um, I rang and uh, I said I'm calling from the UK. They gave it to gave me expert manager. At the time, it's, it's important to say Foodland was a privately owned company and people were very friendly and uh, really really. Um, almost like a big, big family organization. So uh, when I spoke to the manager there, I explained I, I have no experience in uh, sales. However, uh, uh, there, I, I have identified gap in the market. There is no IVA, and uh, wherever I look, there's nothing similar to IVA. And I think I would like to, to try. Uh, I would like to try. Do you have any contacts? Not really, but I have friends who have contacts, etc. so I can start. So I think basically they could tell from my from my um, from the way I was speaking about this, I was very passionate and really keen. He said, "Okay, well, why don't you come to Belgrade and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have a chat?" So um, I was on the plane mm, later, sat in there, and uh, I tried all the products they had. Um, they 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 they're based uh, near Airport City, in Airport City or New Belgrade, and uh, we kind of uh, they said they don't have a distributor in UK. I said, currently I'm still employed. <laughs> still work for uh, uh, Airbus, uh, but I'm, I'm keen to start. And um, so uh, they, they agreed that uh, they'll send me some samples and um, I will have a think until the end of the year and then uh, let them know by the end of 2011. I came back and um, I think um, back at Airbus, somebody will say, you must be crazy, why are you leaving the company? 
Um, I don't know if you can understand, but in my life, uh, because I'm coming from a different background, I think that probably, that's probably characteristics for many of our people living here. You are who you are and you have your heritage and uh, you, you, you remember some different way of life. And I just think, for me, it was too fast-paced, running around everywhere, looking after children, hard way. And um, I, I thought, at least, if we can, I have to live here, obviously. I, I would love to live, I would love to stay here. But if I can bring our food here, to my home here, then that would be a perfect match. Then uh, I can just uh, go ahead and do this. And my, my youngest one was starting school, so I thought, well, why don't I start a business, work from home? And uh, I can be around just at school. So what we decided at of um, Central Life, I'm not coming back from sabbatical. They're very disappointed. <laughs> and uh, we named the company, uh, we set up the company, we called it um, Milana Rich Knows, which is Milana which is my maiden name and Knows is my husband's name, Limited. And we, the room I'm sitting in is uh, our first office. This is actually converted uh, garage. So this is half of the garage with the nice windows. <laughs> so, um, so this is how we started. So I... Uh, Quickly, well, uh, we arranged the samples to start from spring to 20, 2012. But then, obviously, uh, I didn't know where to start from. So I joined Entrepreneur Circle, Entrepreneur Circle for UK. And uh, this is where lots of startup company on business owners are attending. I can strongly recommend whoever is starting a business, let them know I'll put uh, in touch with Entrepreneur Circle. They basically uh, teach you everything, uh, how to write marketing email, how to do a strategy, to ask a question, why do you do business? Because without the big why, actually nothing can happen. You have to have really strong motivation um, to, 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 to start a business. So anyway, this is how I started. So uh, I can tell you uh, just... Yeah, we talk about further, but uh, I really want to go back to your story. Thank you very much for being so honest and going from step to step. Because uh, uh, success uh, is really walk from step to step. And you've been very uh, uh, honest about how you felt at the time with all our um, uh, problems when we do come to other country, with all our uh, difficulties, with all our excitement about the new country. But uh, at one point, we all uh, start to question ourselves uh, uh, what we are missing and uh, uh, being pretty uh, tough to, to new society uh, because we obviously have this nost nostalgia which can be put in different ways. My nostalgia uh, is uh, cured by music because I'm a musician and uh, on one way it's a bit easier I guess because uh, I, I am always back to our music and, and I do feel here like I am really at home so many times, especially with all, all these bands. Uh, that play gypsy music and, and uh, Balkan music, so it's easier. But for somebody who is engineer, uh, obviously that's just not enough, really. Uh, and you mentioned that food is really uh, your point of uh, homeland. And uh, uh, we all uh, feel exactly the same, and we are grateful to you and everybody who managed to bring that food here, because quite often we do have questions from uh, members of the Serbian Council where I can buy pastry for Gibalica, you know, this kind of question that you don't expect really as a uh, some association that you will talk about that, but that is such an important uh, part of our lives. Uh, now, uh, from, from that beginning, uh, your uh, products have been really successful and uh, you really reached the top stores. And uh, uh, can you tell us a little bit more uh, after that, once you uh, uh, decided what you're doing, how, how quickly or how slow your business developed? Okay, so we are, we are going back to, to the spring. To, uh, 2012, okay, so I had three boxes of samples and I had my little one here as well and we are labeling them, preparing them for, to, to do something with them and I thought, well, the best way to present our, to actually test the market, test if anybody likes this, it's a new, totally new product, people know rich, people know hummus, they have all sorts of relishes, uh, chutneys, there's lots of jokes on chutney subject, <laughs> um, because everybody was calling Iva chutney and then we, the first next up, Next reply is like, that's not just me, yeah, that's something different. So anyway, um, so uh, we had three boxes of samples and I decided I had some savings. I said, fine, I will invest. I really want to make this a big hit. hit. I, I know nothing about sales, but I really want to sell this. And actually that helped a lot, this, this huge drive that I, I just want this. I, I want everybody to actually try, I, well, not as many, as, as many people as possible to try and to like, I'm sure they will like it. And um, 
I booked my first trade show, which was in Birmingham, a farm shop in Yellowshire, I think. And that, that was huge exciting. The whole family was organizing uh, posters, everything. I, I, my hobby was photography, so I was searching and searching on the hard and taking pictures and just designing posters and everything. So I, I, as you can say, it's taken a while before we had the first customer, but this is the way to do it. So you have to invest lots of your energy time. And um, if you have some money, I had some savings, luckily, so I managed to pay for the trade show. Um, uh, just a small scan, uh, two by one. So um, my uh, my huge enjoyment was first day of the show, so everything was set up. Trade shows are a total nightmare. I mean, if you if, if anybody's been on a trade show, they know what I mean. It's like you're queuing up, you're up and against big glories ones, big companies who are exhibiting. And you're in a small car, you're supposed to wait, wait there and get your space. <laughs> anyway, then it takes an effort to build a stand. And then uh, next morning, you have to be nice and as fresh as Daisy and to stand me for a few days and meet the customers. Definitely. So, my huge enjoyment was actually to watch their reactions. So, this was very interesting. First show, and they tried this eye. And of course, I would try to describe it as much as possible and uh, show crackers and bread and everything. And actually, some commentary was like, you're infectious, you're <laughs> speaking, you like it so much, let's try, what is this? That was the word that they use, infectious, like infectious, I cannot pass it on, it's like some disease and everybody likes it. <laughs> so anyway, they're trying uh, trying this and liking it, and this is how I was starting, basically, then get their contacts, come back home, then uh, I would go on uh, entrepreneur circle meetings once a month, they would say, what do they do with these contacts? do marketing, I work on the marketing website. But website was, the job number one was to design the website and to um, um, create some kind of uh, brochure catalog because but, um, Portland is giving me uh, more than one product. So it was Iva, jams and juices. What I really liked about those products is that they were totally natural without additives. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> because the creator of the brand, my friend, uh, he had some problems, cell problems, and he was investigating and search, researching how to produce the juice which will last 18 months without adding anything artificial, without adding sugar even. Iva, it's state of the art, uh, no additives, the ingredients, phenomenal. I mean, 95% of the jar is roasted red peppers. And our peppers in southern Serbia, um, where the juices are, they are really, really delicious. The way of cooking, I was, I was, my first posters, my first trade show were how I was prepared. So it was like, never ever, <laughs> all the agar, agar stuff outside in a garden, yeah. with, with the garden, wooden logs and how they were taking shifts and doing all the whole process. So this was me explaining to them how, how this product was being made, the artisan, artisan product. And then how, depending on which wood you're using, it's either like smoky flavor or this flavor, etc. And they were very impressed, so it's still taking a bit, a bit of time to gain the first customer because I had to, to develop tactics. Um, first, to identify, I was in Bristol uh, area. I would go down the main road one day in a car and take a note of which ones are the main delis, write a telephone number, um, and I'll make a plan how many I'm going to contact. This is totally total beginning. This is total beginning with zero yeah. customers. And then um, um, I had advice from the entrepreneur circle. Uh, like a uh, mentor who said, don't pack on more than 10 uh, each week because you need to uh, test how, how is it going. So, for example, I would contact all of the business, just me in the business, nobody else, so it was me doing everything. Contact all 10, um, uh, ask for uh, who's the main contact. I've got some billion products to send to the new, new people in town would be interested. So the success rate of people being interested was like 50%. So uh, my mentor said this is pretty good. Is try, try, yeah, so try try six six out of ten and then they will send parcels and then next week you must call these people and I'll call you to see what happens. So <laughs> he was kind of guiding me. There was no excuses. My biggest fear was how to actually call the first customer. You, you're not going to believe this. Not fear. I felt really uncomfortable. You have to get out of your comfort zone. This is not something I've ever done. So uh, his response was like, what's the worst that can happen? It's going to be human at the other end. We just talk to the human. <laughs> and okay, or, uh, even better was like, well, you may not be there, you may be at lunch, just try. So I just found the person on that. And he was there, he was very nice. And he placed an order. And actually I said, wow, this is great. I've got my first order. Then I'll use the momentum, I'll call another one. 
the other one was also positive. There were two first orders in the first day, and it was like a, a just yeah, a small, yeah. small place, which meant a lot to me. And then I thought, wow, now we have to start actually trading. <laughs> we got the first order, now we need to order. So there was a steep learning curve kind of on how do we import from Serbia. Um, obviously, we were moderate in order, and we ordered first pallet, the first two pallets with various products. One pallet takes about 700 kilograms of products. So I thought, well, the best thing to have um, a bit of everything, and so we have more to offer to, to, to customers. So um, it was, we are now coming to November, so it's, the first show was in April, so all, all the time was spent um, going on other trade shows as well, and then following up all these people. And then uh, by November 12, 2012, uh, we made the first order for the first two parts. So we had to be registered with Storius, who would like to import from Serbia. We had to get our uh, EORI number. Uh, EORI, it's, e, it's um, E O R I. Uh, this is the number that you need as an import uh, when the goods arrive at the customs. How is difficult all this story? Because uh, passion is one thing, start, you have all this energy yeah, and willingness, but then you come to this uh, bureaucracy uh, things and uh, uh, technical technicalities. How difficult is to obtain this for somebody who wants to trade from Serbia? Yeah, it, you have to be really passionate and really persistent. Um, have a little bit of money because no matter what you invest, it will come back to you and then you, you can invest. Um, it was tricky because I have actually ordered, I made a mistake, I, I, made, I ordered, I found, I found that the courier who is going to bring the colors from Serbia and I found the agent in Dover who is going to take the goods and the lorry has started to move from Serbia and then the agent just casually asked me, what is your EOR? And I said, I'm sorry, I don't know what this number is. I <laughs> said, tell your driver to stop <laughs> because oh. you need to have this EORI number. And then it takes about two days to process. Um, driver was in France somewhere already, so I treated him at, with dinner after when he arrived. He had to wait 24 hours, no longer, to, for us to get the EORI number. Mm -hmm. It's lots of administration. So, for example, even before Brexit, you had European document papers, then they arrived in Dover than the UK papers. So European computer needs to read UK ones with all the data and vice versa. But this is not something normally we worry about. You just need to find an agent in Denver and they'll do all this for you. Mm -hmm. So basically this agent is, he's still our agent, um, called eight years on. And he's been entry, he was doing all of that. And the driver only waited one night extra in Denver. And <laughs> dinner when he came back. Yeah. So um, the, the smile on my face when the first two pilots arrived, I was all happy. Then we need to find storage here because they cannot be in a garage, they cannot be in a bedroom, so they need to be somewhere. So then we invested in a storage place and um, learned from those first, first 10 um, trial prospects. We, we, we kind of, I kind of had a system on how to approach other people. So um, I think in about six months' time, I had 32 small customers. Which, uh, when I mentioned people were very really quite, quite surprised. Um, then, um, in September that year, uh, we are now talking about uh, the next year, 2013, uh, we had a few other major customers in the trade show. All the time between the first customers uh, and the trade show, actually, all along, uh, I had to make sure we were advertising, we were doing social media. Not so much as nowadays, it wasn't that strong like Instagram and all this stuff, it you know, was ago. Um, so trade shows and uh, web goods have a good sound website. Um, initially, I had created my website on books.com, but then we have professionals uh, doing them because with marketing experience, we know exactly how to tag and link uh, to show your presence on Google. So I learned a lot on, on the point of view. Uh, doing the website is not just the fact of the pictures and describing nice, it's actually technically a linking with everything so it can be found on Google and also the other side you don't get spam. So, so, at I the think moment, this was, so this was the yeah. Sorry, at the moment, where are, where are your products uh, sold? Where you can buy them? Is it online uh, that you can uh, purchase them? Okay. Okay, so... Um, this year in a lockdown, we create. I, I actually, I can actually create an e-shop, uh, e-commerce. You can buy it directly from our website, which is for, forestbounty.co.uk. I will explain the change in the name in a minute. Um, you can buy on Okada, 
we have um, all three ibats and uh, all five no sugar jams for his bounty on Mocado. You can also buy on uh, Amazon. Uh, you can buy in loads of independent delis across the country. Uh, we, we, were, we were also in Suffragies um, because of the change in rate arranged with the uh, uh, um, uh, we had to actually change the range on the shelves, etc., etc. So this is not something the top customer strategies would uh, would be happy with. We managed to change twice, and twice um, the new owner of Foodland managed to discontinue. So this is basically. But anyway, in terms of success stories, yes, we were strategies for good four or five years on the shelves with, with um, uh, six, seven, eight, eight of our products. Uh, I was very proud going and first testing, uh, tasting, and. Uh, meeting people for money. Then uh, also we had um, a Corte Inglés, which is the Spanish uh, equivalent to John Lewis, um, and it was the Gourmet Club. So they were our biggest customer for the juices, both large, actually I have a bottle here, <laughs> both large and small. And um, that was going very really well until the sell-up of the to Atlantic Group Club, and they decided uh, Spain is not our patron, we are in UK, so therefore they should take over. So they took over at Portland West. They just told us on a meeting in London that they're taking over, um, which was a hard pill to swallow. Yeah. <laughs> that was our, uh, big, it, was, it was about one quarter of our turnover was in Portland West. And um, more than that, we had about £10,000 worth of their stock waiting to be shipped to Spain. Yeah. With our name as a distributor, so uh, this is something I, I learned hard way. What happens in politics in companies? Anyway, um, so quoting less, then also that was um, Medjets. Medjets is the private uh, VIP airline, which is a small, smaller jet, about 110 of them, and uh, they found us on the website. So this is this shows how important the website is that yeah. they could be found. The research for the artists and juices. And they lacked our packaging of the small bottles. And the only request they had is that we produce orange juice. And I went back to them and said, Oh my god, we have all the berries. We don't we don't grow oranges in Serbia. <laughs> we have all the berries, you name it, all the cherries, berries, and the oranges. And they said, Oh, I'm sorry, but you have tomato juice. Tomato is fantastic, they love that. Our tomato and celery juice. Oh, you have to have orange juice, this is what our customer. And then that happened in 2014, 15. And that happened at the time of, of sellout to full and to Atlantic Group. So at the time when Atlantic Group was deciding on what to keep in production, what not to keep in production, they were cutting the range in half. This is me coming on a plane and saying, look, I think you need to introduce new product, which is orange. <laughs> so I had to explain to them so the value of this customer. Orange. And they said, they say, you don't, you don't know what you're talking about. We don't grow oranges. We don't know where to get oranges from. So I came back to England and sent them five supplies of oranges. <laughs> I searched longer hard where to find oranges. So anyway, I didn't want to tell managers that we cannot do it. So I said, I'm still trying. I'm still trying. So they went ahead and they wanted to list five juices. So we couldn't have orange. They started with four, just to get flying, and we wanted to the fifth one. Then I came back to four and said, what's the information? Managers is already flying this other juices, but they will stop if you don't have oranges. At the end of the day, they managed to find oranges and uh, uh, we created oranges. <laughs> so they probably remember me as Smejana oranges uh, because there was lots of trouble for them to, uh, to, to find the orange pulp and then you have to buy huge quantities to make it worthwhile. So I understand all of that. Yeah. So anyway, um, that's just another success story. And we, we have, a, I'm sure, yeah, Lakeland was one winter they were selling Iva in a special packaging. Um, it was only seasonal, we created a special box, I don't know, they're hot. Um, there were a few others, I'm sure there is a few others that just come back. Lots of distributors yeah. also. What I suggest, yeah. I suggest people to go to the website because it's uh, uh, so tasteful just watching the website and, and watching all these products, so, so you really, really want to taste them. So that would be the best way to, to find uh, in details uh, about your products. But which product is your favorite? If you choose only one that is like your okay. favorite. Yeah, I am mild. Just a classic Ivar. Just a classic. Ivar, yes. Now, not everybody knows what Ivar is. We, we, coming from Balkans, do. But can you explain to our British audience what is Ivar? My okay. husband loves it. And uh, I have to tell a little story. When he came first time to, to Serbia, uh, uh, having a breakfast, uh, and uh, all usual stuff what you have, and uh, 
uh, there was a jam actually there, thinking maybe he would prefer like uh, butter and jam. Uh, and he uh, thought that that is a chutney, so he was putting ham and jam on top of it. And we've been all watching <laughs> in shock, like what he's doing. But obviously he, he uh, didn't expect a different food. But then he tried Ivar, and since then I have to bring Ivar all the time. Uh, Ivar and Kaimak, obviously, two things which are kind of must coming from Serbia. Uh, so Ivar is your, your the best. Uh, what about the sweet, like uh, jams and uh, that sort of things? Which jam is your favorite? Well, yeah, wild blueberry, um, uh, it's not hundred, it's not focused. I actually have jars, I can, uh, I can show you. I have jars somewhere here, if you like, I can get them. <laughs> um, it's the wild blueberries, which are this, this size, uh, no sugar jam. It's like a fruit spread and um, uh, this is just seasoned with a little, little bit of lemon juice and it's suitable for diabetics. And uh, it's just very, very tasty, very, very unusual. And I think it's unique. And Nocado loved it. And uh, we just launched Iva in the middle of the, oh, not Iva. We just launched 100% food spreads for his bounty, our own brand, um, <clears throat> in, in the middle of the lockdown. So uh, uh, feedback, it just started to go online. So if you check on Nocado uh, and Forest Bounty, you will see what, what a lovely feedback we have for those uh, no sugar jams. In this country, not lucky. <laughs> this is a good product for this country because AP, everybody knows what jams are, it's not hard work explaining like I will explain Iva if you want. <laughs> and then um, you know, they, when they see this dark, yeah, like um, berry, uh, like wild blueberries, sour cherries, uh, plums. Uh, for example, for plum jam, we kept our traditional granny's recipes with the skins on. And lots of people are complaining about skins, like you forgot to remove the skins. No, we wanted them in <laughs> because it's the most authentic <laughs> of a plum jam and you have the skin in. Uh, then uh, uh, for strawberries, I mean, when, when they made, um, because we we actually are using, uh, the, why, why, did, why do we care for us bounties? Because when Fulham was sold to Avanti Grupa, we, we seek a bit more independence just in case because we heard that they only want to keep production, producing Iva. The salt and juices and jams. So we said, well, we have to start making our own jams. And we have technologists who, who used to work for food. Learn. We have suppliers on the Copernic Mountain and, and surroundings. So we're still helping the economy and people are knowledgeable and they're basically doing it in the same way. And we have our own brand. So one day, if we have to sell the business or something happens, then somebody else can, can carry on. We have producers in Serbia, we have customers here, and we were thinking about it as well. Then you have your own brand created, even if it's like one or two years old, it doesn't matter, it's something uh, that you, you have kind of a, um, how do you say, it's not a landmark, but you, you leave something behind. You know? <laughs> so, uh, I mean, one day I may decide to go to another country, but then somebody else will take over and say, oh, this is made in Serbia, and you know, this is what it is. So, um, yeah, I would say our Google is the best one. What are your plans then? Because now, now you fulfill your, your, your nostalgia with the business, which is with Serbia. Are you planning maybe to go back to live in Serbia or you are happy now in England with the Serbian food uh, coming to the picture? I think that's a bit wow, because uh, as we are getting older, not to mention, <laughs> um, you know, one day eventually, I mean, you start losing parents and um, you kind of think things on the heart, especially if, if you kept a good contact in, in, in Serbia, like I have. Uh, this year we missed because of lockdown our big school reunion, not to mention how many years. <laughs> but it was big school reunion. And the uh, good side of that, we, we re I re engaged with the friends I haven't heard from 30 years. So we're all really like a nice group of we have our own Zoom meetings and stuff. So I'm just missing all of the buzz. And although I have my, lots of English friends, my husband is English and we have a lovely family together and everything. Um, it's still strong nostalgia. I mean, hands up, I think, I don't know, is, is there anybody here who hasn't got this feeling? Uh, I think actually the longer you stay, it's probably stronger, I would say. Uh, I don't know if I can go back and live in Serbia. I would definitely have maybe something um, somewhere, uh, maybe Montenegro or Serbia, and just go and visit. Have the base here, but I would like to spend many months in the summer when I retire, like four or five yeah. months if I can. Uh, are your children? <laughs> are your children maybe uh, interesting? Are your children maybe interested to to continue with your business, or or they see themselves somewhere else? Then they grow up, obviously. Oh no! I mean, uh, 
Well, I would think so. I mean, two out of three children have finished mechanical engineering, so like their moms are, and dad. <laughs> so okay, two out of three children are engineers already. And... They have gone your steps, but you <laughs> Yeah, I think the youngest one is going to fall in, 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 in Harry Styles. I don't know. <laughs> no, they, they, um, they, they, must so, be, they must be really enjoying Serbian food, obviously, in your house. Are you keeping other customs? Yeah. Like, like, oh, yeah, I want to tell you. Uh, oh, yeah, my husband, my husband loves Iva and all of his family, English family. As soon as they open the door, he will go to Iva. <laughs> so I always send them with the packaging and when they leave. And uh, it's just a well-known phenomena. I mean, I, I haven't come across, I've done 22 trade shows in total, eight years in business. I haven't come across anyone who didn't like it, apart from maybe some people from Asia who likes it more hot. So they say, yes. this is not hot. <laughs> and I say, yeah. and they have, normally I have a jar of chilies next to it. It's like, how much hot do you want? Because um, with the heat, I explain to them, we make it too hot. You're actually killing all the other flavors. All what you feel is just it's hot. So if you're a good artist, art is a producer to make a really tasty classic either, mild, then you know, it's like Ilya Smith here there, and she was explaining how to boil an egg. But you need to get the basis right, you know, you need to know uh, how to do basic food, right? Uh, so yeah, everybody loves it. Um, obviously, we manage we have local customers very really here in the southwest, and uh, everybody who is close to know us well. <laughs> um, we do have a competitor, though. A couple of competitors will come in. Other people have similar ideas. Um, but anyway, um, we are exclusive to Granny Secret still now. Um, I think that you are you are one of the first who established that, that brand. And obviously now people uh, will copy it, yes, and uh, it's a bit easier maybe nowadays to, to, to uh, uh, trade uh, because we passed this, this stage of starting to find the ways. Uh, but uh, your brand is definitely the uh, uh, first one that, that we all, all, all spotted and, and it, it made it mark, obviously, to this, this, this industry. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah. thank you very much uh, for such a, such a detailed story and such an honest story because uh, it really gives hope to, to anybody who has idea uh, that if they uh, just have energy to proceed further, uh, they could succeed and overcome all, all the difficulties which, which uh, uh, trading and any other other uh, jobs uh, do, do have. And also what I like, uh, idea that you change your career. Uh, that is what uh, maybe in Serbia people are not so keen to change. They, they usually have a path to uh, go one one uh, way road, but uh, in England we learned that, that you can overnight you just change your life, change your career, and be also very successful in all that. Now, just tell me for the end because you are not living in London, you are you are living in Bristol, and uh, are there many Serbs there or not so much? Uh, are you uh, in contact with one each other locally, or, or uh, it's not so uh, vivid like in London? Oh yeah, actually, it is. Um, I used to live near near London, so not exactly in London. I was in uh, Rickmansworth and then in the suburbs. I didn't have any. I only had one half Serbian. I didn't have any Serbian friends. When I moved to Bristol, uh, either because of job at, at my work at Abbas, uh, we met. I met about eight people who were from Yugoslav background, not only Serbia, from Bosnia, from Herzegovina, from Croatia. And then it's basically word of the mouth, friends of friends of friends. So now nowadays what we have, we have a group from Bristol, a group from Cardiff, ladies and husbands. Uh, most of them have our husbands, I say, from our country. And few of us have English husbands. We are having a great time. We become really close. We meet meeting and jokes and everything. And we have our own groups. So uh, some of them found me through searching for Iva. So the whole group. Cardiff group actually happened because of Iva. They were looking on LinkedIn and they found me selling Iva. No matter that I was an engineer, they found Iva. Because on my LinkedIn profile, I was actually promoting Iva when I stopped. Now I have a separate uh, LinkedIn profile uh, for, for this kind of thing. So, anyway, uh, yes, we have a great time together. We, we do Slavas, we do Sveti Nikola in December, and we do Jujendam in, uh, in May, and we celebrate. Uh, and of course, there's lots of survival going around, and this is because they all know that our juice is completely natural and uh, unusual. Um, in a lockdown, uh, what we realized is the brick, brick and mortar, so called shops, are 
were not really even open. So this is why I started to help our people. I started, uh, I set up our very simple e-shop on site with a message. If it's uh, too expensive, contact us directly and we can ship to personal customers. So we gain lots of personal customers of our origin since the lockdown who are very happy to buy from us on a wholesale price. So that is good. So eShop is on the website. Um, <clears throat> what else we're doing? Yeah, in the lockdown also, when it all started, I think one good thing about our people is, I think, I feel, I feel I'm, I'm very compassionate and want to help, no matter the nation, race, whatever. So um, we actually decided, we, because all the hotels and restaurants were shut and we had lots of famous orange juice, two pa three pallets of orange juice and two pallets of apple just because hotels were shut. And I said, you know what, there's people who need this. So I, uh, well, I met in a local COVID-19 group and uh, uh, it happened that lots of school moms network that the nurses are working on, doctors, not only husbands, but doctors. And they created a list of how many hospitals in the area we can help just by sending juices and eyeliner and jams to the staff to give them break. And just donate them, we didn't want anything. So we filled our two cars, I think we have posted something on this, and went to three, three hospitals, but six departments, including intensive care and the children's department. And we went to care homes and we went to uh, some other social workers. So we distributed two pallets of oranges to these people. Oh, <laughs> and uh, it was a fantastic feeling. Uh, my husband is a least category and he was the one driving me. And every time I go and I try not to face them because of social distancing. I felt so bad in coming back to the car in case I, I picked up some anything and sit in the car with <laughs> It was really emotional. But, and, uh, but the feedback and the thank you, thank you notes, and uh, just their, especially their faces, they're very masked. They could tell they're almost fearful because they have a hard work to do. They will care homes there. And so, yeah. Just this huge, oh, I mean, thank you. I and mean, that was amazing um, feeling. So what happened afterwards, uh, somebody, me because the word goes on because the businesses are helping and they said there is a, a cafe in Bristol they're actually cooking for homeless and for people who cannot afford so is the free food provided for anybody so you can pay minimum 250 you can donate or you can pay nothing and still have food and um, I said I know I'm gonna donate more I still got one pound <laughs> left of oranges and some jams so we, we organized the North Bristol um, homeless people um, collection distribution point and we went to that cafe and it was all kind of a totally different planet all in graffiti and uh, yeah. so Black Lives Matter and all this, uh, which we are not very familiar with but I'm compassionate I understand so we donate, donated to them as well and uh, again the gratefulness of people so as a brand you also need to look at helping others don't be selfish you know uh, and that would be recognized that people will know and some people already are coming back to us and asking can you have more of that that type of stuff. <laughs> well so, done. Well, then you so, can to provide much more now because your 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 uh, audience is spread <laughs> now after after the people which usually maybe not buy now now they, they started to taste the, the food of Balkans. Uh, yeah, they're doing these cool as well. Thank you very much for your story, Snežana, and we wish you uh, all the best and we, we just hope that, that uh, we will be able for years and years to come to, to uh, have your products on the shelf, that we don't have to go back to Serbia to, to, to buy them and to bring them. So thank you for your generosity, for your hard work, and uh, for bringing the taste of uh, Serbian Balkans uh, all the way here to the modern society of, of the UK. And uh, we will follow your work further. For our listeners, you can go on the website, uh, and uh, you can find much more about it and, and uh, purchase the, the taste of uh, Balkan. Excellent. And uh, just the last word, if, it's, if there are any enthusiasts who would like to help out to get involved in a business, please let us know. <laughs> because now we can work from home and achieve a lot. So. Yes, so for anybody who wants to get in touch with Nation, that will be the best way to go uh, to, the, to the website, which we will advertise at the end of the Thank you very much. Okay.